The Lord be with you. Grace and peace to all of you in the name of the triune God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Welcome in the name of God who is abundant in steadfast love and mercy and who welcomes us in person and online, longtime friends and new guests to worship at this place, First Presbyterian Church of Garner. This Sunday marks the concluding chapter for now of this year's edition of This Is Our Story, a worship series that we have uh, around this time of year annually. Again, I am deeply thankful for those who suggested scriptures and hymns for the last several weeks of worship. We were not able to fit in every suggestion that was offered, but the year is not over yet, and there will be space and time for at least a few of the other uh, suggestions before the end of 2022. This series, though, has again reminded us that God continues to work with us, forming and reforming us, writing with us a story worth telling. We share that story again today and also in days to come especially next week in worship when we start an overview of Old and New Testament characters like Sarah, like Job, like Peter, who we could describe as unraveled, whose lives and plans fell apart, and yet who experienced God still in their midst. You see, our communion table today is already decorated with materials that remind us visually of God's power and desire to weave lives, relationships, and even the world itself back together. And beginning next week, there will be several other hands-on ways we will experience this weaving as well, even as we also experience it today in the celebration of Holy Communion. I look forward to exploring all of this more deeply together next week. As I share some other announcements, though, about the worship and life and work of this congregation, I do invite you to take the pads that are on the center of the aisle to sign them and uh, pass them along for others to sign so that we can know who we are worshiping with today. First and foremost, I want to draw your attention to our printed announcements with last week's glorious celebration of Faith Formation Ministries. You see many announcements among those printed ones of different Bible studies and when they will meet. So I do encourage you to take uh, opportunities for those. Men especially see also the announcement about our monthly Men of the Church uh, gathering um, at 8.45 next Sunday. Uh, We're doing that on the second Sunday this month, of course, because it is a holiday weekend, and so thought our attendance would be better. So please do make plans to attend that as you are able. Because it is a holiday weekend, uh, a reminder that our church office will be closed tomorrow in observance of Labor Day, but that the church will still be at work. There will still be communication that we send out. Uh, Our nominating committee will uh, also still be at work, and we encourage prayers for those folks who are contacting uh, those who God has called to be elders and deacons among us. We're also uh, going to be looking this week, uh, even in a short week, on delivering the items that have been brought in for SOAR of Wake County, an organization that uh, collects hygiene items for the underserved in our community, for youth who need access to those items to have a sense of normalcy and dignity in their lives. Thank you to everybody who brought some last week. I've noticed some already still out in the narthex. Um, Please do continue to get those in as soon as you can if you may still have some contributions to bring. Also in the narthex, you can see some other items you might want to pick up. Uh, In addition to the information you see in the announcement insert, there is actually a whole uh, uh, tri-fold flyer in the narthex 
talking about all kinds of faith formation opportunities. Uh, Mike Koenig uh, put that together, and so we do want you to see that and uh, take one with you. You'll also see in the Narthex uh, information about a community event for Able to Serve, one of our mission partners who is having a silent auction beginning September 14th and going through the 16th. Please see that information and take it as you feel led. And another community event that I heard of and wanted to share with you uh, before we could get it in a printed way um, is an event that will be happening at the Garner Senior Center on September 9th. There will be a speaker about protecting ourselves from fraud and scams. And as I read the information, I think that's especially from electronic uh, 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 misinformation that can come our way. And so we will be sharing more information about that for any who might want to attend on September 19th at the Garner Senior Center. Last week marked a return to some of our pre-COVID worship practices as we once again passed offering plates. We do that again today, and we are thankful for those who have signed up to be ushers in order to help us do that, as well as those who sign up to be greeters. Um, Trish Holmes or Jackie Dale sitting in the back would love to know if you have any availability September, October, into November and December um, to continue helping us with those needs of usher and greeter, especially during this time where we know so many, including many who, who would normally sign up, are dealing with colds or allergies or things of that nature, um, or perhaps are out of town unexpectedly. Um, please talk with them about uh, slots they still have left to fill, fill for that need. We'll also be passing our communion plates today, but we have uh, our individually wrapped kits as well. And so if you would like to participate in the sacrament using um, one of those kits rather than the bread and the juice in the plates, we will have a server with that. You can just raise your hand and that server will come to you with um, uh, that individually wrapped packet. Continue thanks for all who help us navigate this difficult path as we continue to respect our neighbor and do our best to promote the safety and well-being of all people. Indeed, our help, our safety, our well-being comes from the God who loves us and gathers us together. So let us now be called to worship this God as we share in our call to worship led by Jeannie Connor. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. God is our rock and our fortress, our refuge and strength. God is our and our trust. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Please stand as you are able and join in singing hymn 816, If I'll but trust in God to guide thee.
Friends, you may be seated. Friends, in this place, God invites us to mutual love. But to find that sort of love, we must sometimes let go of certain things. We often need to release our need for honor, our desire for privilege, our want to always be right. So in humility, let us let go of the things we know keep us apart from God's love. Let us seek mercy, trusting in the promise of God in Christ Jesus our Lord to forgive our sins. Let us offer the prayer of confession we find printed in the bulletin, and then let us pray silently. With one heart and voice, merciful God, forgive us, for we exalt ourselves and mock the humble. We choose to believe we are self-sufficient rather than trust in your strength. Open us to your spirit that we might serve all people without regard to the outcome, devoting ourselves to your honor alone. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. O Christ, have mercy. Amen. Beloved, in this place, we discover mutual love. The love we have for each other, the love we have for God, and most powerfully, the love God has for us. So, beloved, believe the good news. Our sins are forgiven because God is merciful and just. And God loves. Let us therefore be reconciled to God and to one another, walking in the light of Christ and living this good news of new beginnings, of mutual love possible and shared with all. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. We can share mutual love by sharing peace. And so we do that today as we do it each week by sharing in a call and response and then greetings of peace as you feel led and are able. And then by singing the Gloria Patri together when we begin to hear the notes of that song. So friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Let us share peace with one another.
Friends, you may be seated. As we turn to a time of proclaiming the word, we have our conversation with the young and young at heart. We have already had our prayer of ministries for education last week, so we uh, hear a message now brought to us by Jane Kanabi. Is it good? Okay. All right. Do you know what this is? Popcorn seed. So when you put that, if it's in a bag, you end up making popcorn. So it starts off really small. And then the magic of the microwave or hot oil gets it to be big. Well, I see that you're doing some readings in a few minutes, and one of the stories you're going to talk about where there was a little amount that became a bigger amount, and that's kind of like popcorn. You have tiny seeds, and you get bigger, but it was Jesus that made that happen, not the microwave or the hot oil. But I want you to think about some of the things that we do in the church that seem small but are big. Last week, did you collect two cents a meal? Yes. So everybody gave a little bit, but then it ended up being a big amount that'll go to like Garner Area Ministries and help. And we also, we all bring in a little bit of cans and things like that. So, and I also want you to think about yourself. You feel like, I'm just one person, I'm just a kid, and I don't have a big impact, but through God, you can. You can be more than just you, especially if you come together. So, I have a treat. Now, you're having to do work today at church, so do you want to run and give these to your mom so that she can give it to you after church because we don't want a lot of popcorn. And I'm going to give you three for your family. And I don't know if you'll save it for the next Auburn game, but I'm sure you do have snacks during that. So, okay. You run, give them to your mom, and then when we come back, we'll pray. <laughs> Dear Lord, Thank you for our time and the stories of how you started with so little and you fed so many. And let us remember that we can contribute and do great things in this world because of your love. Amen.
Let us pray for illumination. Holy One, speak to us again through your word, so that we may be filled with joy and strength, and able to live with hope and love for all. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah 7, 17, 7 through 8. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord, is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when the heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of the drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew 14, verses 13 through 21. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew there from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Melt us, mold us, use us, fill us. O Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Amen. So, of the many fascinating and also familiar parts of our gospel story today, Matthew's version of the feeding of the 5,000 plus with five loaves and two fish. Today, it's not the who nor is it the what that really grabs my attention. It's the where. Because the location of God's abundant gift-giving provision through Jesus happens in a most unexpected place, a deserted place. A place where Jesus had retreated after he heard this. That his cousin, John the Baptist, had been killed, dead, buried. But the privacy of Jesus' grief over this profound loss or any concern about John's enemies now coming for him before 
the appropriate time. It's soon interrupted by a crowd that has also heard this news and seeks after him. They come also to a deserted place, most likely because they too are grieving about the loss of one they looked up to, about any number of concerns that they can no longer deny and pains which they have no power to fix. They come because of a lack which they don't know how to fill. And in this deserted place, before an abundance of food with leftovers aplenty, fills hungry stomachs, Jesus shares another gift. Compassion, Matthew's gospel names it. A willingness literally to suffer with their pain, no matter that they've interrupted his own. Jesus gives the gift of seeing their need and listening to their concerns and sets about making them whole again. But deserted places and the thoughts they stir, the tales they tell that the glass is always half empty, that we are too small, that there is not enough that we can never measure up. They are stories we know well. For they linger even in our own experiences of abundance. The disciples are proof of this. As they remind Jesus where exactly they are. I mean, it's a bit absurd, really. Jesus, full of compassion and curing the sick, again interrupted, but this time by the insistence that in a deserted place, the needs he is already meeting are actually too overwhelming. The mouths to fill too many to count, and the resources all too scarce. Jesus responds, though, by again seeing and meeting need. Providing again compassion and miraculous abundance that makes stomachs full and spirits whole even in this deserted place. Now, biblical scholars debate over the exact nature of the miracle. Did Jesus supernaturally multiply the scraps of food like some ancient microwave? I love that image, Jane. Thanks for that. Did he multiply the scraps of food presented? Or did his insistence to the disciples that they had what was needed prompt others also to contribute and share more than anyone thought was on hand? To be honest, I'm not really sure where I come down on that question. What what I really do believe myself. But I do find myself agreeing with one of my preaching heroes, Lutheran pastor David Lowe's, who suggests that at least one piece of the miracle going on here is Jesus' ability to, to again and again in a deserted place see possibility where others only saw obstacles. Much like compassion, much like real food for empty stomachs, that too is a gift of abundance. A reassurance that no deserted place is absence of God's love or presence. And that when we say, oh, we only have scraps, 
as if God says, we have scraps. Look at what we can weave and do together. My hope is that we can remember this gift is a part, maybe the key part, of our story as part of Christ's church. For our story is not primarily a project or a program to repeat. Though if today's miracle prompts us to meet the needs of others, to give the hungry and food insecure something to eat, that is, of course, a good thing. But we must remember our story is first and foremost about a trust and the promise that there is one who knows the grief and pain of a deserted place who looks with compassion on all who find themselves there and meets their need. There is one who perceives possibility, who puts down deep roots of the tree that can withstand a drought, and that says we are enough even when, especially when we feel empty. It's our story, but it's also our song. Because perhaps one of the best, most recent examples we have of that in our life together, church, is our choir. If you want to start talking about times of a deserted place and a long drought, you don't have to look much further than what COVID-19 did at times and in ways to ministries of music and the joy of singing. And yet even in that, for, for two years, people tried, they saw possibility, they recorded their voices, they sung in solos. We learned a different way of still receiving that music and sharing it. And now we have these voices, we have this player back together. We have new possibility. We have voices, many of whom are beautiful on their own, but are so much better when stitched together than indeed miraculously multiply. Now, I've said we're going to continue exploring these ideas, beginning next week as we Look at all the different ways God's gifts abound, even in deserted places, when it doesn't feel like there is enough. We'll check in on people like Sarah, Job, Jeremiah again, Peter, Zacchaeus, Legion, Thomas. who were all treated with the gift of compassion, will consider the many ways God continues to show up and to weave the scraps we have that we sometimes are into something new. But we start that journey today at the table. We open up a new chapter by reminding each other of the profound miracle of possibility revealed not only in a feeding of 5,000 with loaves and fishes, but the feeding of all of our hearts in morsels of bread and drops of juice that become for us, for the world, an abundant feast. They become a visible sign of God's compassion in Christ. At the table together, we rejoice 
and God's gifts that may at times seem small and yet always seem to multiply and make us more alert, more eager to share God's presence that is all around us. Today we share the gifts of God for the people of God. Because that is our story. That is our song. That God is here. That we are loved. That we are enough. And that new life is possible, even, especially, in deserted places. To God be the glory as we do so. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, having heard your word read and proclaimed, we ask that you would now take it and seal it upon our hearts so we may live it fully with joy and good news. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as we respond to God's word by sharing in our affirmation of faith today, the Apostles' Creed. Will you please stand as you are able? And with one heart and voice, let us say what it is the church believes. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And now, friends, it is time for us again to put forward the faith that we are enough. And whatever we have, God, we trust, will multiply. So let us now present our tithes and our gifts and our morning offerings as a proclamation of our story as God's people.
ages, we faithfully add our gifts to your overflowing abundance. Bless these gifts that they may yield an increase for the spreading of your love in the world. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. Scriptures tell us that people will come from north and south, from east and west. They will come to eat at this table which the Lord Jesus Christ has invited us to come. People will come to taste and see that the Lord is good. People will come to receive strength for the living of these days in places of plenty, in places that feel deserted. People will come, and here God will multiply and fill us. So come, come, all you who have much faith in these promises and those who would like to have a little more. Come, you who have been here often and you who have not been here in some time. Come, you who have triumphed in your walk of faith and you who have stumbled and fallen. And we all have stumbled and fallen. Come. Come. Will you please join me now in the responsive beginning of our prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. O Lord, indeed, it is right and good to give you praise and thanks because you do wonderful things. In Jesus Christ, you make your salvation known for all people, completing the faithfulness you promised to ancestors of old, ancestors of every time and place, with whom we join now in giving you thanks. We give you thanks most especially in this time for Jesus Christ, who showed the fullness of who you are, vulnerable and imperfect, the Word made flesh. Jesus proved that power is indeed best expressed and most perfectly used through weakness. He shared that grace is sufficient for us, and that we and all our ills and doubts are enough. And in Jesus Christ, you, O God, poured out from your abundant store a mercy that fills us with gratitude and with courage. For in his life, death, and resurrection, we trust that his love casts out our fear, renews our hope, exposes the myth of scarcity, and leads us into life that is real, that is fragile, but is also full. And now through these gifts of bread and cup, we join all the earth in praising you, asking for your Holy Spirit to wash over us so that as we eat and celebrate, we might also serve and share, becoming instruments of your peace and servants of your faithfulness. Keep us ever faithful in this path, until Christ comes again to establish justice and plenty on the earth. Make this our story and this our song, praising you all the day long. And may we also join in the prayer that Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I now pass on to you what was handed down to me. 
The night that he was arrested, our Lord Jesus sat in an upper room with his friends, and he took a loaf of bread, normal and small. After giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, do it, remembering me. And then in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and he said, This cup is a new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for all creation. Whenever you drink of this, drink of salvation, and also remember me. For friends, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, because of Jesus' promise, we know that we are proclaiming that he is here and that he will come again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will our servers please come forward? Thank you. 
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will neither hunger nor thirst again. And Jesus said, I am the true vine. As I abide in you, so you shall abide in me. And this we show the love that Christ first had for us. Amen. And friends, let us share our prayer after communion as well. God, you are great, and God, you are good. We thank you for so much more than food. By your hand we all are fed. Grant us, O Lord, this day, and grant all others daily bread. Amen. Now, friends, I invite you to stand again as you are able to sing our closing hymn, our sending hymn for today, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. May it be so with us this day, my friends. May that be our story and our song. As we go from this place to share our story, to live our hope and not our fear. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace today, this week, and always. Alleluia and amen. And let us now sing our response, Go Now in Peace.